Did you walk all the way here from the village? You must be exhausted. Yes, and I was been pulling this card of eggplants. <laughs> <laughs> so, what can I do for you, detective? Okay. I want to examine these. Let's see. The flowers are beautiful. Okay. Now I'm gonna. <laughs> now, now I'm, I'm gonna going, think. I'm going to think. Let's ask Yoshie about Makoto. I hope this doesn't offend you, but I have to ask some tough questions. Can we talk about your grandson Makoto's disappearance 18 years ago? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why are you asking? I'm investigating a case that may have some connection. Oh. And Makoto's disappearances. I see. Let's just start with anything you remember about it. Oh. Let me ask you one thing. Oh, she's sharp. Of, of, of course. Does Junko know you're here? <laughs> 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 No, I haven't told her. This woman's going to see right through me. Yeah, we're not going to lie to this old lady. We're not going to lie to uh, Yoshie. No. Not going to lie to Granny Kuze. Uh, no, I, I haven't told her. I suspected not. Yeah, no, she, she knew right away. Yep. She wouldn't have wanted you to speak with me. She knows her granddaughter well. Probably overprotective granddaughter, I bet. Yeah. I understand. Well, I'm not sure if I can help, but I'll tell you what I can. It was July 1st, 18 years ago, Junko's ninth birthday. We wanted to make it as special as we could, so my husband and I were out shopping for a gift on her birthday. Well, yeah. We didn't plan ahead, of course. Oh. Uh, Luke, we didn't we didn't get an appointment. We walked in and we mentioned uh, uh, Yoshia's name, and apparently she was right there in the lobby, and then came over and thankfully bailed our asses out. Yep. We must have gotten carried away. We were gone far longer than we expected. We didn't get home until after seven p.m. And when we did return. You went out shopping on your granddaughter's birthday, not before. You waited until the day of. Ma'am, there weren't any lights on in the house. It was 7 p.m. Jinko, Makoto, where are you two? What is it? What's wrong? Oh. Uh. We found Makoto sitting in a darkened tea room, staring vacantly, and all around, there were purple flower petals scattered all over the place. What? Purple flower petals? I tried to find out what was going on, but Makoto wouldn't say a word. Then my husband said... Hey, where's Junko? Oh, okay, I can't find Junko anywhere. Makoto, where's Junko? Hey, Makoto. That was expert acting. Thank you. Thank you. Per, per, per. Well, I figured I would be I would be doing husband impression. Well, the woman doing her husband impression. No, that, that you I know what? Really I like badly. that. I like that. When Makoto heard Junko's name, he rushed out of the house. I'm wondering if the, the if the flowers in the vase there are the flowers in the vase are irises. They're not even remotely similar to what was in the photo okay. or the the little memory picture. Okay. We were in shock, but we waited patiently for the two of them to come back. We didn't call the police or anything because that's just not how we did things. They didn't return. At around 9 p.m., we called the police. Oh, okay. And shortly after that, I heard the front door slide open. I thought, thank goodness they're back. So 
we rushed to the front door to greet them. But instead, it was that fuckwad neighbor of ours with too many eggplants. <laughs> Juniper was the only one there. And she had a hundred eggplants. <laughs> she had returned without Makoto in tears. When I asked about Makoto, she just cried harder and wouldn't speak. Makoto is extra dead. He's double dog dead. Yeah, he's super duper turbo dead. The police eventually showed up and tried to speak to Junko. But she wouldn't say anything. Smiley Man Which probably killed couldn't. him. Smiley Man is probably after after Junko. Oh shit, you're right. I bet you're right. Yeah, he got, and, and Makoto got involved. Yeah. Later that night, we searched far and wide for Makoto. Neighbors and police helped us comb the entire village, but... We couldn't find him anywhere. And we've never seen him since. Oh. <laughs> what do I say to that? A uh, neighbor I spoke with said that Makoto and Junko were very close as brother and sister. So what could have happened that day to separate such tight-knit siblings? Yoshie, come on! Yoshie! <laughs> Look, we've just asked her to relive a very traumatic memory. She's allowed to just go quiet for a bit. Maybe it's just a painful memory she doesn't want to relive. She'd stop talking for now. <laughs> I'd slowly and casually slide an eggplant over to her. <laughs> will this help you talk? <laughs> Maybe this will loosen up that memory. No. Oh. oh. Uh, open notebook. I'm yeah, just gonna probably got an at... entry about Grandma now, right? Yeah, there she is, Yoshi Kuze. Uh, grandmother to Junko Kuze, Makoto Kuze, along with her husband. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's great. 83, oh. damn. She's hanging in there. Uh, Lori says examine flowers more. I'll try the surroundings after that, too. They're purple flowers. I mean, oh, you know what? Well, that's me... different than what he said about them before. Let me look at her. There we go. Hmm. Is she looking at my plant? She wants the eggplants! She does! Ask her about her plastic bag. What's that you brought with you? Uh oh, this? One of the villagers gave it to me. I see. My grandkids loved eggplants, especially Makoto. That's what I heard. Will you listen to another little story? I kind of have shit to do. Never mind. This has nothing to do with Makoto's disappearance. <laughs> I'd love to, please. Makoto was just a quiet, honest, and kind-hearted boy. Hang on, I gotta sneeze. Or not. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, uh, bless you. Fuck. <clears throat> Thank you. He smiled all the time, even if a friend was teasing him. And he never got angry. He was always smiling, huh? Always smiling, you say. He was a sweet brother to Junko. Tell us more about these smiles. Junko used to be annoyed that Makoto never seemed to get angry. He was so full of rage. She'd get angry on his behalf sometimes, she'd say. Who's going to protect you, big brother? It's me. I've got to do it since you won't protect yourself. I can almost hear it. Uh. Unisan, baka. She 
always said she would protect her big brother. And then she didn't. And then she turned into a hard ass. Yeah. You got those eggplants from Tayama, didn't you? Uh, okay. Anything else? Would you like one? Would you like them all? He was one of those big brothers who sort of let his younger sister call the shots, but... Deep down, he knew she was his little sister. She was so adorable. And now she's a Christmas cake. I just don't know where I went wrong. <laughs> you, you look single. <laughs> and even as feisty as Junko was, I'm sure she looked up to him as a big brother. Even when he seemed a bit soft. He was always protecting her. Okay. I mean, boys can be soft too, ma'am. Let's hear what you're... God damn it, I am doing that. Junko and Makoto's parents died in a terrible accident. Oh, but Junko was still just a baby. She cried all the time, even after coming to the village. So, like, are you going to elaborate on the accident, or is the accident just going to be this nebulous thing? Like, it could it be was anything. Just a terrible accident, Anthony. Sure. It must have been so hard. She couldn't have the love she needed from her parents. She had to accept substandard love from her grandparents instead. Yeah, we only went out on her birthday to buy her presents. Never before. <laughs> I mean... Junko did cry a lot, poor thing. And now she's concentrated rage. Yep. Makoto would watch over his sister with a smile on his face, not saying a word. Sometimes Junko would tease him and ask if he was sad, but Makoto would just say, I could never be sad with you as a little sister. That's what he always said. Okay, that's hmm. fucking adorable, though. Uh. <sighs> I mean, he's either dead or he's the killer. He's super... Well, he was, like... She was nine when he died. Uh, oh, disappeared. I, I disappeared, right. He's not dead. Right. He's super turbo dead. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> well, say, he's either dead or he's the, or he's the murderer. He's, he'd have to start awfully young. Maybe, right? Maybe. I mean, he's older than her, but not that much older than her. Well, what I'm thinking is maybe he was so traumatized by the first uh, Smiling Man murders that he has kind of been warped and is now a new Smiling Man. So, like, based oh, off of it... Oh, yeah, okay. That's what, that's what I'm thinking. So maybe he's the one who murdered... Um, Aisuke. Aisuke. Yeah. yeah. Like, again, this is me just being genre savvy. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's either he's, there's no way, there's no happy ending for Makoto. No. He's either dead or the killer. Yeah, he's the copycat killer. Exa yes, he's the copycat killer, yes. That is our theory for right now. Yeah. Hmm. I'm so glad that Soman has so much to offer. Right. Some nights after Junko went to sleep, I noticed that Makoto would cry alone. He never showed that sort of emotion in front of us. He was usually all smiles. The poor boy had helped heal and nurture Junko. Those precious kids, they're both irreplaceable. <laughs> this got really sad. Yeah. Now we're going to make uncomfortable eye contact. Yeah. Well, she says nothing and just stares into our soul. So, young Detective Kuze and her brother Makoto had a strong bond as children. It sounds like they were as happy as a brother and sister can be. So, what could have happened between them on that day 18 years ago? That piece of the puzzle is still missing. There must have been something to trigger their actions that day. Maybe look at the flowers again. Oh, you're right. Ha-ha! Hmm, purple flowers. Say. Yes? Have you ever seen an eggplant flower? No. Um, I don't know. No? 
I wonder if the scattered flower petals she mentioned could have been... Well, they have very pretty purple flowers. A shade of purple just like Junko's favorite. Hmm. Hmm. On the night that Makoto disappeared, Junko finally calmed down and spoke with me. He explained what happened and why there were eggplant flower petals everywhere. Please elaborate. Back then, my husband and I were avid gardeners. We made wonderful meals from our vegetable garden. Naturally, the kids took an interest, especially when they tasted how delicious everything was. Junko started saying, I want to grow vegetables too. I asked her what kind of vegetables she was most interested in growing, and she said, Eggplants, because my brother loves them so much. Oh, she's so cute when she's talking about her grandkids. Look at her. Yeah. Let's grow some for his birthday as a surprise. He was just so adorable. Anyway, we thought she could manage some eggplants, so we stayed out a small plot in the backyard. We figured Makoto wouldn't find it because he hated the bugs back there. It was going to be a secret. The plan was to harvest in July, which was when both kids had their birthdays. And Junko looked after them every day. She was almost egging on the eggplants to grow. Lol. Lol. Well, Junko was a terrific gardener, and the eggplants grew nicely with lots of blooming flowers. He was just overjoyed. She'd ask me every day when we could finally harvest them. Well, sweetie, once the eggplants start to grow, that's when we can harvest them. When I told her it would be around the time of Makoto's birthday, she was overjoyed. She was so excited, she didn't realize that the flowers were going to bloom on her birthday. So, she came home from school that day. I'm home! Hey, Junko, guess what? I have a present for you. A present? What for? Uh-oh. It's your birthday, and I got some flowers in your favorite shade of purple. Happy birthday! But are those... I know it's not much, but I really thought you'd like them. And they were just in our backyard. Can you believe it? So beautiful and in full bloom. Oh, no. Oh, no. I know his heart was in the right place, but oh, what he had done. Those are the eggplant flowers. You idiot! I was growing those! I planted them for you, and I've been tending to them for months, and... <laughs> what Baka! I hate you! I hate you! Uh, I wish you'd just go away! Yikes. Wow. That was some rage. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like, I could understand her being mad if he did it as a joke or whatever, but, like, yeah. he, he thought he was doing something nice. J Junko. Yikes. She probably regrets it. I mean, she's she was a little kid. Yeah. That's how Junko remembers it. Oh, how she remembers it. I wonder if it was different. Well, that's all Grandma has to go on, is what Junko told her. Yeah. So, that's what happened 18 years ago. That must have been traumatizing. For Junko to have lost her brother like that after such an intense fight. I'm sure she took it hard. She probably blamed herself. Oh, she 100% did. Oh, a thousand percent! And poor Makoto to have upset his sister so much when he only ever wanted to make her happy. The whole incident sounds like it was a shock. What an irony that their love for each other is what ultimately tore them apart. Not irony, but that's okay. It's so sad. I'm gonna think some more. Mm -hmm. Let's hear what Yoshie has to say. Okay. Junko was so depressed after the incident. She cried and cried, feeling like it was all her fault. 
I tried to think of ways to cheer her up. I don't know if it made a difference, but at one point I helped her press some of the flowers into bookmarks. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I told her that we'd keep them as good luck charms. Maybe they would help bring Makoto back one day. I repeated that again and again, almost like a mantra. Since then, we've both carried ours everywhere. Junko especially treasures hers. That's cute. That is. Oh. oh. I wasn't expecting this to get sad. What was the voice I was using for this lady? I don't know. Yoshi, dinner, is, dinner will be ready soon. Basically Bailey, I guess. Yeah. Oh, already? Well, time flies when you get chatty, doesn't it? I've heard lots of stories. It's probably time for me to head out. I think I've told you just about everything. I hope it helps at least a little bit. Yes, I mean... Hmm? Really, you shared much more than I expected. Is that so? Oh, I wonder if Junko will be upset. Oh, well. <laughs> it's fine, you're old. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, don't be nervous. I won't tell her. <laughs> she gets it. <laughs> she, she knows gets her it. granddaughter. Can I say anything else? Time flies when you're chatting. Okay, bye. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. I hope I haven't overstayed. Don't be silly. I haven't spoken to anyone about Junko or Makoto in a long time. It was a pleasure. Just one more thing, Mr. Detective. Oh no, it's Columbo! Oh no, she's Columbo! Do you know what eggplant flowers represent? Death! No, I'm afraid I don't. Well, they represent happiness, truth, and hope. Happiness, truth, and hope. That's lovely. Thank you for sharing. Junko taught me about that, believe it or not. He clings to the hope that if we hold on to the pressed flower bookmarks, one day Makoto will come back. I guess we both cling to that hope, actually. Careful what you wish for. Uh... Now, today, a detective with a bag of eggplants came to talk to me about Makoto. It feels like fate. Anyhow, I guess that's why I felt like I ought to tell you the whole story. I can't explain it, but I have a gut feeling that you'll be the one to finally reunite Junko and Makoto in hell. I mean... <laughs> wow. Uh, um... Well, if you need any more information, please feel free to come back anytime. You can take a cab next time. Don't try to walk up the mountain again. That was silly. Th that was stupid. <laughs> Thank you, I will. I'll get going now. And then I walk down the mountain. With my eggplants. Ah, the Utsugi Detective Agency. He just stomps into the office and dumps the eggplants on Utsugi's desk. Hello, I'm back. Wait, what? Thanks for all your hard work today. Let's get after it again tomorrow. A uni. Has Yumi gone home already? Hmm. Why do we have such a big TV on the desk? I think it's in the corner. Well, it's late, but I should probably wrap up today's today's investigation. I like these reviews at the end of the, the chapters. I do too. Detective Kuze and her brother lost their parents at a young age and were raised by grandparents. The grandmother, Yoshie, helped make sure that they were raised in a loving environment in the village. It sounds like they formed a close and supportive family. But something terrible happened on Junko's ninth birthday. Junko ran out of the house in tears because... Because Makoto picked the eggplant fat flowers. Because Makoto picked the eggplant flowers. Yes, she was upset because she had been carefully growing the eggplants for him. When he realized that he had ruined the surprise gift of eggplants that Junko had been growing, 
Makoto was stunned and didn't notice that Junko had run off. I didn't realize that picking the flowers off the eggplants ruins them. I mean, if eggplants are anything like zucchini or other kinds of squash, like the... With zucchini, the, the zucchini come from the flowers, so if you pick the flower, oh, you're not right. going to get the squash. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, I don't know if that's the same for eggplants, but I'm guessing based on context clues here. Yeah, now that I, I'm imagining, I'm, I'm, I'm remembering how eggplants grow, yes, they come from the blossom. Okay. Eventually, he realized that she was gone, so he left home in search of his sister. And he never returned. Okay, yeah, I was right. He picked the flowers and basically ruined any chances of the plants having yeah. uh, fruit. When Junko, re when Junko returned, still in tears, she said she thought it was her fault Makoto was gone. But I'm still missing details about what happened while they were away, and why she returned alone. I've got to reveal a bit more of the puzzle. And I think I'll have to suck it up and speak with Detective Kuze herself. Of course, even if I have the courage... I doubt she'd be willing to give me the whole story. Hmm. Oh, right. After the fact, Junko was obviously upset, and Yoshie tried to cheer her up. Yoshie said that they crafted something together, right? What was it that they made? Bookmarks! Yeah. There we go. Bookmark press with an eggplant flower. Yeah. Yes, bookmarks with pressed eggplant flowers. It sounds like both Detective Kuze and Yoshie each still carry one of the bookmarks around with them. And Yoshie told me that eggplant flowers represent happiness, truth, and hope. Keeping that symbolism in mind, I wonder if Junko was inspired to become a detective because she believed her brother was still out there. Eventually, Junko grew up and moved away. A few years later, after Yoshie's husband passed... Yoshi had moved to a retirement home called Relax Yukariko Village. So, for now, the Kuze family home is vacant, but... Uh, the house will be demolished soon. Yeah. The house will be demolished soon. Yes, that's right. And Detective Kuze stopped by recently for a final check of sorts. It must have been three days ago, or one day before Eisuke Sasuke's body was found. Oh, game, thank you so much for clarifying the timeline. Yes. Wait, did Detective Kuze tell the neighbor that she had to get going because she'd be working early the next morning? But... Does that mean she's such a good detective that she knew there'd be a murder? Wait... Okay... Mm. She No, I, I think she had a feeling something was going to happen... I'm wondering if, like, Makoto corresponded with her. Yeah, her detective sense was tingling or yeah. something. Well, it did pan to that closed closet. I'm assuming it was a closet. Yeah. No, that'd be crazy. I think I did pretty well today, if I say so myself. I feel like patting myself on the ass. Now, I need to decide on a plan for tomorrow. Yawn. I'm too tired right now. Let's talk with Ayumi first thing in the morning and decide. Charge your phone, dipshit! Yeah, dipshit. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yes! Oh, shoot. I almost forgot to charge my cell phone. He heard us yelling at him. I've got to be sure to do it now. So when you get one ass pat. <laughs> Chapter four, a suspect. <laughs> Good morning. Sorry I'm late. I forgot to charge my phone again. Oh my god. He was like, I need to get there early and talk to Ayumi. And then he gets there late. Good job, oh. Soman. Well, Ayumi's not even here. Is she out investigating? She's on a hot date with Senpai. Is she, is she with, with, s s s s Senpai? <laughs> oh. Uh, yes, hello. Mush mushy. Hey, Soman. Late night for you yesterday? Yeah, I climbed a mountain. It was, yeah, but I learned quite a bit. And I got, like, a thousand eggplants. Do you want an eggplant? I've got so many eggplants. Oh, really? I'd love to hear all about it. Huh, that's great, because I can't wait to tell you all about it. Where are you? I'm on a date with Senpai. Oh, sorry, I'm actually... Hmm? 
on a date with Senpai. I'm actually supposed to meet with Mr. Fukuyama this afternoon. Yes! I called uh, it! Uh, 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 Mr. Fukuyama? Oh, right! He said that he talked to some more kids at the school, so... I'm hoping he's come up with some something promising. Maybe a lead? I'm getting my hopes up. Yeah, I hear you. I'm not at all threatened. <laughs> what are you going to investigate today? My feelings? I mean... I think I'll go to the library archives and look up how they covered those murders 18 years ago. Sounds good. Stay safe. Bye! Thanks, Yumi. You stay safe, too. Oh, and say hello to Mr. Fukuyama for... Click! Oh. She hung up. That's usually what people do after they say bye. So. Ha ha ha. Uh, hey, where's Mr. Utsugi? Yeah. Mr. Utsugi, can I shove my face into your pillowy pectorals and my, sob? I'm, I'm sad. She'll never notice me. I'm not senpai. <laughs> yep. I'm off. I'm depressed. Oh, oh. The City Library. Nice. Mr. Siki is hanging out with Columbo. Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd like to head in and start investigating as soon as possible, but... My the library heart is doesn't open until noon. Oh. I probably ought to have a plan. The murders were 18 years ago, so I'm sure I'll have to do some digging. No, just go to the microfiche. It's fine. Just go to the... And also, like, they're well-documented murders, so you'd have a date and everything. Yeah. Hmm. Use phone. Scream for help outside the library doors. No, I'm not going to call anybody. It doesn't make sense to dive in without a plan. Bro, you have a plan. Yes, that's right. I should check with Mr. Utsugi to see if he has any advice. Oh my god. So it sure is nice to have this cell phone. All right, hey, Mr. Let's... Utsugi, I'm here at the library. I was going to look up stuff about the murders 18 years ago. Do you have any advice for how to do that? Uh, where do I look up, uh, you know, the murders 18 years ago? Oh, Sobin, how can I help you? So, I'm about to go into the library to see what I could find out about the cases from 18 years ago. But I thought I'd check with you first to see if you had any advice for researching or anything to avoid. Hmm, let's see. Well, look for serial girl murders, since that's what I was, since that's what it was called and pay close attention to the first case. You'll want to learn how the incident was reported and how the news covered the story that year. Then, once you've gone over the material, you'll want to review your notes to see what jumps out. If something seems off, I'd recommend focusing in on that key point and investigating further. Oh, okay, so we're just getting a more in-depth tutorial. Thanks, yeah. Utsugi. I think you'll find a lot of connections between the events of 18 years ago by the time you're done. It's almost like I've already solved this mystery. And I've just been holding things back uh, until the proper time. I've just been holding it back to see if there's any more people who will die. <laughs> I strongly believe that Makoto's disappearance is related to the murders and... I wouldn't be surprised if the information you uncover helps us get to the bottom of the Sasaki case as well. That makes perfect sense. Thank you, sir. I also have a strong suspicion that the urban legend of Emio, the Smiling Man, will play into it all. At least, that's my current assumption as I investigate. In any case, I must apologize for leaving the office frequently unattended. It's not like you're a PI or anything and actually do most of your work outside the office. You see, I'm actually at a hostess bar. <laughs> it's no problem at all, sir. You mean I can take care of things? Thank you. I'm fortunate to have such excellent assistance. I'm counting on you both. Thank you, sir. I'll be off now. I sure hope I get the credit for solving this case. You won't. You're just an intern. Talking with Mr. Utsugi is always inspirational. I've got a lot to live up to. All right, let's get inside.
Let's see. I'm guessing newspaper archives will be the best source for information on, on older cases. Amazing. I've never set foot in a library, apparently. I have a year's worth of papers from 18 years ago to get started on. They're heavy. Anyway, I'll stop whining for now and check them out. Then I'll start whining again later. I should try to be quiet in the library. I'm going to ask these books to tell me their secrets. Yes. Alright, I'd like to review the documents. These are newspaper clippings from January and February of 18 years ago. Let's see, when was the first serial murder? The data on this article about the case is... Ah, I found it! It looks like the first murder was committed in February of that year. No. Oh. Ah, I was lucky. A 17-year-old 17 17-year-old named Ayaka Haji, Hashizume was found on the beach at Kofuku City, strangled. Her house had been burned down the, just the day before, and her father's body was found in the wreckage. Initial reports suggested that the father may have killed her and then himself. Later, reports pointed to the possibility that a third party may have killed both father and child. Also, the article mentions a missing person who is reported to be close to the girl. Huh. But there's nothing at all in these articles about police finding a paper bag on the head of the victim. Hmm. Right, we know that already. What caused the fire, and why wasn't Ayaka's father able to escape? And what about that missing person? There are a lot of missing pieces in this first case for sure. I feel like that was explained weirdly. So, the house burned down and her father died the day before her body was found? Yes. Did I understand that correctly? Yes, that is okay. how I understood it. Alright. Like, that, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. These are newspaper clippings from March and April of 18 years ago. It seems there were occasional follow-up articles after the February crime, but not much a, a coverage overall. There isn't any new information that can help me. These are newspaper clippings from May and June of 18 years ago. Looks like the second murder took place in May, about three months after the first. For now, let's dive into the details about the second case. Here we go! Here we go! Here we go! The victim was a 15-year-old girl named Sachiko Takagi. Because the second victim was also a young girl who was strangled in Kofuku City, the police announced early on that both crimes may have been committed by the same person. Still, they never did mention the detail about the paper bag. We already knew that there was that, that was omitted from the papers. Right. According to a neighbor of the second victim, the young girl in question came from a troubled home and was often seen crying alone at night. The possibility of a serial killer seems to have sparked more newspaper coverage at the time. And the third incident happened in June. The third incident occurred in June. Here's the article about it. The third victim was Mika Inoue, a 17-year-old girl, another teen girl just like the first two. She reportedly had a falling out with friends that day and left her school in tears. However, it seems like she didn't go straight home. Instead, she must have been attacked. The third victim was also from Kofuku City and was strangled in the same way as the first two victims. The article does mention the possibility of all three cases being connected by a common killer. Let's see what they say about the paper bag. Ugh, still no mention of it. Alright, well let's try these other... Yeah, might as well finish out the year. Yeah. Uh, these are newspaper clippings from July and August of 18 years ago. Because Makoto went missing on July 1st. Right. So maybe there's something in here about that. Okay. No? Oh, I hit the wrong button. Oh, oh, okay. When I hit the B button, all the text disappears and I can just look at the pretty art. Ah. 
It seems like the serial girl murders garnered a lot of coverage. There were articles every day. Still, despite all the ink spilled, I'm not seeing many details that might help me actually solve the case. Oh, nothing about missing the photo, huh? No. Okay. These are newspaper clippings from, from September and October of 18 years ago. Hmm. Not many articles reporting on the serial girl murders. Maybe there was nothing new to report by that time. These are newspaper clippings from November and December of 18 years ago. Apparently there's a war on Christmas. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'm not seeing much coverage of the serial girl murders at this point. Just a few short mentions, typically in bur blurbs off to the side. If there was no new information, there wouldn't have been much for the media to report on. Okay, I've gone through a year's worth of newspaper clippings. While I'm thinking about it, I wonder if there's an article on Makoto's disappearance. I believe Makoto disappeared in, it, you said it was July. It was July, yeah. July? Let's take another look at the clippings from July and August. Is there anything on Makoto? Here we go. Just a snippet of an article. 14-year-old boy reported missing from Yukariko Village. Everyone in the village searched through the night, but the boy remains missing. Although the timing was curious, no one suggested connection to the serial girl murders. That said, both Mr. Utsugi and Inspector Kamada seemed to suspect there was a connection. I've got to get to the bottom of this. Well, what's interesting, too, is, okay, so the serial killer was going after um, teenagers. Right. But, like, if he was going after Makoto, she was only... Not Makoto, excuse me. If he, if he was going after Junko. Junko, she was only nine at the time. Huh. Makoto was in the right age bracket. Right. Hmm. hmm. Well, let's check our handy dandy notebook. Our handy dandy notebook. Welcome back with food. Okay. Welcome back. Yes, welcome back with food. Okay, so what am I looking at here? Just Makoto? Um, I mean, I guess the highlighted ones indicate there's new information. Yeah. Well, we haven't looked at this yet anyway. So okay. Junko Kuze's older brother, he disappeared 18 years ago and hasn't been seen since. Makoto disappeared around the time of the serial murders of girls. No new victims have surfaced, but a connection is unclear. What was when was the last girl murdered? July. Okay. According to Mr. Itsugi, Makoto disappeared after going to look for Junko when she didn't return home on time. Well, that's not quite what Grandma said. Makoto and Junko lost their parents at a young age and were taken by grandparents in Yukariko Village. According to Tayama, he, re he really liked eggplants. Makoto disappeared on July 1st, 18 years ago, the same day as Junko's birthday. Yoshie found him that day, sitting and staring blankly in the darkened tea room. Purple flowers were scattered around him. Hearing his grandfather say that Junko wasn't home, Makoto rushed outside. The village searched for him to no avail. He was quiet and gentle with an honest personality, an easygoing person who was said to never get angry. The siblings had been in a fight after Makoto picked eggplant flowers from plants she had been raising for him. His disappearance wasn't a big story at the time. The article noted no suspected connection to the serial girl murders. Hmm. That's all we got. Uh, okay. Um, well, we've got the three girls now, right? There's Sachiko. I just want to see something here. Oh. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, first Factory victim. worker. Jesus. Uh, she was killed 18 years ago in February. Uh, and then Mika Inoue, third victim. Uh, also 17 at the time? Yeah, she was killed 18 years ago in June. And then in July was, the, was when... Uh, not that one, this one. That's a couple. 15. Uh, in May. So June was the last one, and he went missing in July. Okay. It sounds... I'm wondering... How old was he when he... When he 18? 14. He was 14 when he disappeared. Okay. 
Okay. I'm all right. Here's what I'm thinking. Okay. I'm thinking Junko is going to be the fourth victim. Yes. Makoto intervenes. Yeah, because she ran out of the house crying. Right. Makoto intervenes. I don't know how, but I think he man he manages to stop the smiling man, potentially killing him. Mm hmm. And that fucked him up. Like a 14 year old killing a man. Yeah, he's gonna disappear. Like he's gonna, he, it's gonna really mess him up. Um, yeah, especially like if he's not used to being angry or like, yeah, because he was described as a very gentle person. Right. Right. So, so now he's all messed up because of you know, understandably, now it's um, he comes back 18 years later, and this seems like it's a fucking cry for help or something. Right. Because like, like okay. So, this this goes against the... It, first of all, the paper bag was omitted from the media, so it had to be someone who knew about him. So, that makes Makoto primary suspect right there. He would have seen him. The right, yeah, that if, he if killed, he encountered him. Huh? It, yeah, if he encountered him, yeah. he would have seen the paper bag. If he killed Eisuke, which goes against the M.O. of, you know, killing the, the young girls, um, I'm wondering if... I wonder if Eisuke had, like, a sister or something? Hmm. That's what I'm thinking. I This is where I'm at right now. I think we need oh, to continue. Yeah, Loop, all the victims were upset. Um, yeah. It didn't explicitly say in the newspaper article, but the, the detectives we talked to before explained that each of the three girls had been... Crying. Crying, yeah. Yeah, they were all crying. Um... Here's what I've learned so far. The police announced that the serial girl murders were most likely committed by a single killer. Although it was never mentioned, each of the victims was found with a paper bag on their head. With that information, it seems obvious. Anyway, after the second murder, the first case came right back into the spotlight. And while media interest in the serial girl murders remained high for a while, it tapered off around August, probably because there were no new leads or information. Also, no new victims, thankfully, if you don't count Makoto's disappearance. Now, why is that? I read a lot about the murders from 18 years ago, but now I'll focus in on some key parts. I think the first case is critical to the investigation. Mr. Utsugi thinks so too, as he told me to focus on it. Yeah, if we could go back to that real well, quick before we... Here we go, right here. Oh, well, he's going to go. Okay. The first case did really catch my attention. It's the most curious of the three. I should investigate it a bit more thoroughly. The victim of the first case was, was Ayaka Hashizume, a 17-year-old girl. She was found the morning of February 16th in a secluded beach area of Kofuku City. A local fisherman found the body. He had an airtight alibi and was immediately ruled out as a suspect. Forensics reported the cause of death is strangulation with bare hands. The time of death was, was the night before. It turns out that Ayaka had quit her job at a local factory the same day she died. Oh. However, her supervisor at the factory reported that she left on good terms and had already given notice. All of that said, I have a few major concerns with the facts of the case. They relate to two key people involved who had connections to Ayaka. Yeah, like, if if she were working to supplement her dad's income, maybe he might have been pissed that she quit. Yeah. One of the key figures was Manabu... Manabu... Is it Manabu or Manabu? Manabu. Uh, emphasis on the first syllable. Manabu. Manabu. Okay. Manabu Hashizume, Ayaka's father. He and Ayaka lived together in Kop Kopuku City. However, their house was destroyed in a fire the night before Ayaka was found dead. And a body was recovered in the ruins. It was believed to be Ayaka's father. Believed to be, but not confirmed? Right. Some speculated that the father could have killed Ayaka before returning home and killing himself. However, that theory didn't necessarily hold up to scrutiny. And what's more, the second and third murders a few months later further complicate the situation. Yeah, that's true. Because even if Ayaka's father was guilty, he died in the fire. He couldn't have killed others. 
And he wouldn't necessarily have had a reason to do so. He'd have no motive. Yeah. Last but not least, the information about the paper bag was never made public, which strongly implies that all of the victims were killed by the same person. Could it have been the other key person? The other key person in this case never had their name reported by the media. The person in question was a young man who was often seen with Ayaka before her death. Okay. He hasn't been seen since she died. Oh, that's suspicious. And when his apartment was searched, the police found a disturbing amount of blood. That's right. I remember them talking oh, about this. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, the police strongly suspected him and went to great lengths to track him down. But he was never found. This must have been the same person that Inspector Kamado was talking about. One is dead and the other was missing. Huh. It's entirely possible that Ayaka's murder and the home fire were unrelated. Especially considering that all of the victims were young girls of about the same age. The house fire falls outside of that category, and the persistence of the paper bag points to a serial killer. I wonder if the police had the same idea. I can't find any articles speculating around those along those lines, however. Okay, let's review the information I've gathered so far. I w what I want to know is when did they check out his apartment? Yeah. Was was this con was this connection brought up right after they found Ayaka's body, or mm -hmm. was it? did it not come up until later right because if it came up later and they checked out his apartment the whole uh makoto being the one to seriously wound the the smiling man would make that the blood in his apartment make sense oh yeah if um so she died in february right and makoto disappeared in july G G yeah july yeah july so yeah that's a that's a very good point So, like, ultimately, it's a matter of how long before, or how long after Aimee was found did they check this guy's apartment? Yeah, exactly. So. Okay, let's review. I'm really enjoying this. This is good. I like this a lot. I like I like how this is phrased, like, like, like most visual novels, there's no real gameplay, but, like, you really have to pay attention mm -hmm. um, for these, for these quizzes. It, it, it makes me feel smart. The first murder was 18 years ago, and the first victim was a girl named... Uh, that would be uh, Ayaka. Yeah. Oh, do I... How do I... I think you need to, like, open her entry and then go over to her name. Ah, yes. The first murderer was 18 years ago, and the first victim was a girl named Ayaka Hashizume. It does feel very mildly overdin. Oh, overdin, my love. The, the thing, like, God, I wish we could play Overdin again live on stream, but, like, you and I have both played through it. Yeah. So, like, the impact is just gone. Yeah. But, all right, anyone who's watching this right now, if you love puzzle games, play The Return of the Overdin. It is one. So of, it is literally one of the best puzzle games I have ever played. You are going to sit there. You're going to start it, and you're like, "I want to savor this," but no, you're going to blitz through it in like however long it takes to beat it. Like I think, Teresa, you and I beat it in like a couple of days. Oh, well, it occupied me for a week because I had to go to work. Oh, okay. But I, yeah, I, that's literally all I thought about for a week. I did that, that game. Holy shit! <laughs> At the time of the first case, there were two persons of interest. The first one was her father, Manabu. The first one was Manabu Hashizume, Ayaka's father. The second one was Soman Noodle. No. No. Uh, Shinsuke. No, not. Did he have a name? Did we ever get his name? Uh. Others? Yoshie, Tsubasa, Megumi, Makoto, Daisuke, Kami. Oh, yeah, Daisuke. Oh. Imiharu? Oh, Kamada. Okay. Uh, Soman, Shinsuke Utsugi, Mika Inoue, 
Yama, Kohei Takiguchi, the missing man. He doesn't have a name, he's just the missing man. Where Over on you? the first page. Uh, oh, there he down. is, the missing man. Okay. Yeah, uh, you knew the first victim on the day... Oh, okay, it was right here. on the day the first victim's body was found, he disappeared. Okay. Okay. The second one was a man who was presumed missing. At the beginning, some speculated that Ayaka's father was the killer in a murder-suicide situation. The day before Ayaka's body was found, her father died in a blank. A fire. Fire. In a fire. Fire emblem. Ha! Yes, that's right. The father was presumably killed by the fire that burned down his house. Meanwhile, regarding the missing man, was he another victim, or could he have been the killer? It seems as though the police considered both possibilities. He disappeared the same day that Ayaka was killed. There was a disturbing amount of blank found in his home. Urine. Urine. <laughs> <laughs> blood. Blood. There was a disturbing amount of blood born. Yes, his home was drenched in a massive amount of blood. Inspector Kamada said that it would have taken devastating injuries to produce that much blood. So it's possible that he simply died. And what, his body melted into the floor? Yeah, he combusted, he exploded. Alright, I think I made good progress today. I think that's about all I can determine from my research so far. I'm glad I talked to Mr. Utsugi first. His advice helped me find the right path. But, ultimately, the serial murders remain unsolved. The police never found any conclusive evidence. Is there, a still, is there still a suspect out there that was never identified in the previous investigations? Hmm. Yeah, what Hillary is saying in the chat, they never conclusively ID'd the body as her father. Yeah. The fire victim. Yes. Now that I think more about the second and third victims, there was a common factor I hadn't considered. They were both seen crying before they were killed. A girl crying. In the urban legend about the smiling man, he always appears in a paper bag in front of a crying girl. I wonder if the first victim, Ayaka Hashizume, was also crying before she was killed. If there was cause to suspect her father killed her, maybe there was some deep trouble at home. Hmm. Oh, it's getting late and I haven't eaten. I should take care of myself. Good advice! Everyone remember to take care of yourselves. Make sure you yeah. eat. Yeah, and hydrate.